All right. Well, all right. Why don't we get started? Um, it's uh, really a distinct honor for me today to uh, present uh, SB 399. Uh, this is an issue that uh, uh, many of us here in this uh, uh, conference have been working on uh, for a number of years, uh, probably uh, too many years uh, for uh, all of us uh, to think about uh, because this has been a long, long uh, road uh, for so many individuals. But what um, SB 399 is going to do is to give uh, youngsters, about 250 here in the California, uh, some glimmer of hope. These youngsters are sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. And if I can just kind of graphically remind all of us what that means. It means that if you are a young individual and you are sentenced to life without the possibility of parole, you as a youngster are now given a death sentence. You are going to be a living human being. However, you will rot in prison because nobody is going to care about you anymore. There's no interest in investing any resources for you because you're never going to get out. You're never going to be part of society anymore. You are just simply going to live out the rest of your life in prison. And that is a horrible sentence for any individual. Uh, what um, uh, SB 399 is going to do is to give a glimmer of hope to these young individuals. After 10 years, the parole board will then review your record. And if it is determined that, in fact, there should be a second look at your sentence, then the courts will review your record, and if, in fact, the court agrees with the parole, then what we will do is to convert that sentence to 25 years to life. And I just hope that um, my colleagues here in the state legislature understands that this is, in fact, a rather moderate and a balanced approach to dealing with this hard issue. Uh, let me end by just simply saying that a couple of years ago when we started, when I started on this uh, particular trail, uh, there were a number of other countries uh, in this world that had this particular sentence of sentencing kids to life without the possibility of parole. On this year, United States, the United States of America are the only country, is the only country in this world that has this sentence anymore. And unfortunately, California has the dubious distinction of having the largest number of those individuals within the United States. And so um, it is a um, sad commentary uh, upon the, all of us here in the state legislature that this sentence continues and that we are doing these horrible things to our young people. And so with that, uh, let me bring up um, uh, the person who kind of really spearheaded this issue. Uh, who led the good fight in the years past and continues to be a leader on this, and that's uh, Elizabeth uh, Calvin with the Human Rights Watch. I'm here uh, from Human Rights Watch to uh, express our uh, absolute support for SB 399. We support the Fair Sentencing for Youth Act because we believe that it will provide a meaningful review for these cases. As the senator said, the sentence of life without the possibility of parole is a sentence to die in prison. There's no time off for good behavior. There's no opportunity to prove that you've changed and become a different person. Next to the death penalty, there is no harsher condemnation. The United States stands alone in its imposition of this sentence on people under the age of 18. We have over 2,500 people serving this sentence, and in California, there are more than 250. SB 399 would ensure that young, young offenders are held accountable. It would impose severe, significant, lengthy sentences. But at the same time, SB 99 recognizes that young people are different from adults, and our courts and our laws should treat them that way young people should get a second chance. Human Rights Watch has investigated California's use of this sentence with people under the age of 18, and we found several disturbing factors on how California uh, implements this sentence. Nationally, we estimate that 59% of youth who are sentenced to life without parole are first-time offenders. And what that means is they do not have as much as a shoplifting on their record. 
these are not irredeemable individuals. These are people with much potential who should get a second chance. Our research in California found that oftentimes young people in these crimes were acting under the influence and sometimes under the direction of adults. In an estimated 70% of cases in which the teen was acting with a co-defendant, um, that one of those co-defendants was an adult. More disturbingly, however, is the fact that when it came time for sentencing, 56% of the time, the adults got a lower sentence than the juvenile did. Also troubling is the fact that oftentimes in California, youth who are participating in these crimes are not the primary actor. They're not the trigger person. They're not the one who physically committed the crime. They are convicted under accomplice liability or under what's called the felony murder rule where they were acting and involved with a crime that there was no intention to commit a murder and somebody else unexpectedly, unexpectedly uh, committed the murder. We also have serious concerns because California is among the worst in the nation as far as the racial inequities in the, in the, impl in the uh, imposition of, of, this, of this sentence. Um, African American youth in California are 18 times more likely to get this sentence than white youth and Latino youth are five times more likely to get the sentence than white youth. SB, 99, SB 399 recognizes that youth are different from adults. It provides incentives for them to work towards rehabilitation. It offers them the chance to earn their release. And so we wholeheartedly support SB 399. Thank you. Thank you. Next is uh, Gloria Galvez, who's uh, with the Youth uh, Justice Coalition. So good morning, everybody. My name is Gloria Galvez. I'm a youth organizer with the Youth Justice Coalition. Like all of us at the YJC, I have experienced police, court, and the juvenile health system firsthand. And I am here to push our state to choose fairness over revenge and to end the sentencing of youth to life without the possibility of parole, also known as JLWOP. So I would like to share a quote with you guys today. Um, America is the land of second chances. George W. Bush stated this, and he said it was, he said it in the context of people who are in prison needing second chances and the possibility of a better life. Even someone who is not known as a prison reformer believes in second chances. Americans across the nation deeply value the opportunity of second chances. A second chance to a job, a second chance to education, and above it all, a second chance to life. Life without parole for youth leaves no room for second chances for even more important second chances. A chance to apologize to people we have harmed, a chance to re-enter our communities and to better our communities, a chance to grow and develop, a chance to care for our families, and a chance to follow our dreams. These chances are important for everyone, but at all the more important for someone who was a teenager when sentenced to prison. Today I stand here before you all as someone who got in trouble when I was 14 years old. Had I not received a second chance, I wouldn't be here. Growing up in some parts of California, we are taught that life is cheap, just as is expensive, and college is impossible. This is not to say that young people have no moral values. Instead, I'm stating that our moral values are constantly challenged by the high levels of violence, easy access to drugs, stress of helping our families to put food on the tables, and the lack of books, teachers, in our, in the lack of books and teachers in our schools. These constant challenges can drive anybody into making bad decisions. I'm a college student and I'm studying sociology and hope one day to be a teacher and give back to my community. Um, working with the YJC and I will continue to give back to my community as long as I live. Um, I can do these things because I got a second chance. I want to see others who have made serious mistakes get second chances, and for that reason, I'm here to support SB 399. You know, Gloria, uh, being a sociologist, uh, makes a good politician, too, she was thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, next is um, uh, Father Mike uh, Kiernan with the uh, uh, California Catholic Conference. Well, thank you, Senator. Uh, <clears throat> I'm glad to be uh, able to say a few words here today on this very important matter. Uh, certainly, as we said, the uh, United States is a great place for second chances and for 
giving people a new opportunity. The church, uh, Catholic Church, and I think all churches believe in forgiveness, reconciliation, and the opportunity to have a do-over, as it were, as best one can in life. As the American bishops say, all are created in the image and likeness of God and possess dignity, value, and worth that must be recognized, promoted, self-guarded, and defended. For this reason, any system of penal justice must provide uh, for those necessities and so must oppor give opportunity for people to have a second chance. Society must never respond to children who have committed their crimes in the same way as uh, adults who commit crimes. The two are certainly not the same, and uh, just an example would be who possesses a fully informed conscience, who has maturity, and so on. SB 399 would give juveniles sentenced to life in prison the motivation to work uh, towards rehabilitation. And as was said earlier in the uh, sharings, uh, what a terrible thing to think that uh, someone very young is uh, put away for life and therefore there's nothing needs to be done for you because you count for nothing. You're, there's no hope for you. There's no possibility. Why would we put any time or effort into this person? They're just to just wait for the person to die. I don't think that's acceptable. I think it's a shame that we would ever uh, allow that to happen. Uh, the bill that has been proposed is still a strict bill, I think. It certainly has many safeguards. It's not a case of letting everybody out just uh, uh, real, uh, real off real easy, but it is a case where the situation can be evaluated and a new opportunity can be provided and then the person can have that forgiveness and reconciliation and, and a new chance to live and to create a life. If the uh, Jewish scriptures and the uh, Christian writings and indeed the great teachings of our Muslim faith and many other faiths, the Buddhists and all of the great people that I work with, if there's anything in there, it is about the opportunity for renewal, for forgiveness, for second chances, for seeing the value of the individual and allowing that person to uh, become a new person. Uh, Jesus himself, of course, was constantly forgiving people all the time and lifting them up and allowing them opportunity to renew their life. And so, um, in speaking for the whole Catholic Church, uh, certainly even speaking for the Pope himself and so on, I would see that this is very important to uh, give uh, these young people a new opportunity. I compliment you, uh, Senator Yee, on what you're doing here, and I pray that uh, everybody will use this opportunity to reevaluate this whole situation and to come up with a much better plan than we have. Thank you for what you've been doing, and God bless this good work. Next is uh, Deborah uh, Hodge, uh, who's a mother of a juvenile sentenced to life without parole. Good morning. It's with a great deal of regret I stand here, a person, a mother, who has a son serving a life without parole sentence. My son was your typical 17-year-old. He was going to his senior year, looking forward to everything that goes along with graduating from high school. My son wasn't a gang member. He had never had any, he didn't have any record. He'd never even been arrested. As a matter of fact, he was a pretty good kid who didn't cause me any grief. And then one bright sunny morning, he woke up and seemingly like he lost his mind and all of his good sense. What started out as a stupid, misguided joke in a blink of an eye turned into something that shattered his life and the life of the victim's family forever. Upon his arrest, he confessed everything. He didn't try to blame anything on anyone else, just himself. He was, and still is, very ashamed and remorseful for what he's done. He's ashamed because of the pain he's caused me, and he's ashamed because of the pain he's caused the victim family. That 17-year-old boy is now a 32-year-old man. He has spent the last 16 years in a hell that's been extremely hard on him. He acknowledges that he is responsible for being where he is. He's not allowed to participate in any of the prison programs. The attitude is, he's never getting out, so why waste the resources? But he stands tall, believing that he can live his life with integrity, even in prison. He works in the kitchen, and he helps the younger inmates uh, improve their reading and writing skills. He's a very caring person because he's more concerned about how, what's going on with me than himself. He's made me proud of the way he's living his life. As a parent, there are no words to express the depths of my grief or the intensity of my sorrow. 
There's no corner in my mind or my heart where I can hide from this pain. It's been my constant companion for 16 years. 16 years I wake up, it's the first thing I think about every morning when I wake up, and it's the very last thing I think about at night. And what grieves me the most is knowing that no matter what I do, I can never make this right. I can't give that family back their mother, and I can't ease the guilt my son feels. The sorrow and the lack of hope I see in his eyes every time I see him tears at my heart and it breaks my soul. SB 399 saves our children from this unyielding, slow death sentence, but it's not a get out of jail free card. SB 399 recognizes that a teenager is different from an adult and should be treated in court differently. My son should serve a life sentence, yes, but he should get an opportunity to work towards release. SB 399 would give him the chance to prove that he merits release. Our children are just like yours. They had and have dreams and aspirations. And maybe some of the people listening to me are thinking, well, my child would never. Well, I thought that way too. But I'm here today to let you know that things can change very quickly in the life of a teenager. Things can go terribly wrong very fast. We're asking your help in correcting the great injustice of this sentence. The United States is the only country that uses this sentence. Every other country on this planet has deemed this sentence too cruel and unusual for children. A lot of these kids are adults now, and not the immature children they were when they were incarcerated. They just want a chance to show who they've become and not be defined by one act that occurred in their lives before they were even grown up. So please, give them that chance. Thank you. Did you spell your name? Did spell your name? It's D-E-B-O-R-A-H Hodge, H-O-D-G-E. Right, the last speaker is uh, Randy Hager. He represents the uh, California Psychiatric Association, but Randy, over the years, Hager, over the years, have proven that he does not just simply represent an organization, but he understands the issues, he understands the clinical issues around which uh, he, uh, he represents. And so uh, with that, um, Randy Hager. Thank you, Senator Yee. Um, my name is Randall Hager. I'm the Government Affairs Director of the California Psychiatric Association. And my members, um, particularly the child and adolescent psychiatrists, strongly support this measure. Um, and I think one of the, a real quick way of saying why is that uh, you could say that the brain that does the crime is not the brain that does the time. And what that really means is that this bill is good policy because it's rested on a body of scientific evidence that indicates that the young brain matures at a slower rate and, and matures more uh, into adult adulthood than we ever thought possible. So in, in a real sense, the observations of psychiatrists as well as parents of, about the inexplicable, uh, sometimes impulsive acts of, of childhood and, and youth and early adolescence um, really are part of a maturation process in people. And our members work to help people recover. They help people to rehabilitate and they know that those acts really take a conscious choice. In order to take that potential and turn your life around, you have to make choices. And if you do not have hope, you will not reach out and make those choices. And that's why the psychiatrists in California strongly support this legislation. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. Let me uh, conclude by bringing back an earlier point that I made. Uh, several years ago when we started uh, this uh, particular issue uh, on this particular bill, a number of other countries in this world decided that it was okay to send kids to life without the possibility of parole. Since then, they all now have realized that that is in fact cruel and unusual punishment. All other countries in this world, except for the United States, now ban that particular sentence. We, who are supposedly the most progressive and the most understanding country, compassionate country, have now, set, have now dropped down to probably one of the worst country when it comes to children. And California has this dubious distinction of being the worst of all. We have the largest number of youngsters in prison without the possibility of parole. And so those are the realities that we have. Uh, if we are going to be a state, a community, a society that understands and 
uh, respects our children, then we should, in fact, give them a chance. This bill is, as I think uh, Deborah said, not a get out of jail card, but rather it is a proof that you can, in fact, get out of jail. And it does set in place, in motion, a number of rather difficult hurdles. But I will tell you that many of those youngsters meet those hurdles day in and day out in prison, and they ought to somehow be able to present that evidence and ask the court as to whether or not they should, in fact, be out on parole. So with that, um, let me uh, um, uh, ask if anybody has any questions. I'm sure my colleagues would be more than happy to answer whatever you may have. Senator, uh, respond to possible concerns by uh, families of victims of these crimes. Well, you, you know, I, I understand, I think, uh, how uh, victims feel. Uh, my wife was um, uh, accosted at one time, and I understand how all of us who are victims, uh, families of uh, uh, victims, uh, understands and feel about the situation. But I think that within our own heart, within our own being, we should have some compassion and understanding and forgiveness. And so that's what I am saying to my uh, 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 colleagues uh, who may look at this bill with a lot of suspicion. This bill is not about revenge anymore. This bill is about our future. And that if our society in this state defines who we are by vengeance, uh, then we are down a very bad road. But if, in fact, uh, we are looking at ways of saving our children and giving them hope and giving them a second chance, uh, then I think uh, we're at a better road and a better society. Yes. California allows uh, the juvenile protection program uh, over the years inside. Well, I, you know, I would imagine that you know we have a number of uh, different programs to try and help rehabilitate individuals, but again, uh, there is just absolutely no incentive uh, for our prison systems to try and rehabilitate, to try to provide services for these youngsters, because literally these youngsters are going to grow up and they are never going to see daylight ever again. And so with limited resources, you know, why would one then spend those limited resources on someone who's never going to get out of prison? So with that, uh, these individuals are locked up, left alone. When we started this issue a couple of years ago on this particular bill, uh, we uh, asked the Department of Correction how many youngsters are in prisons with that particular sentence of life without the possibility of parole. They couldn't even answer that question. They couldn't even identify where all those youngsters were. Literally, those youngsters are just simply locked up and forgotten, and we throw away the key, and we erase their memory from any of our records whatsoever, and that's what's wrong. All right, with that, thank you very, very much, and I'm sure my colleagues would be more than happy to answer whatever questions you still may have. Thank you.